Hello. Here today is the Unity UT61E. I really like this meter. I've owned it for a couple of years. It's very accurate on most of its ranges. The problem I'm having with it now is let's see if I can get it to do it. Yeah, some of the range ranges on the switch, particularly the capacitance range here, the selection just doesn't work very well. It'll pop over into other ranges. I've actually seen it go into the milliamps range while it has or just turn off. That was that was pretty good. So it's always been a little wiggly and that the range switch will move around. So I don't think that's it. I'm really hoping there's some kind of contact problem down there and it's not just a problem with the plastic detents. But only one way to find out. Let's take it apart. So like I said there are a lot of things to like about this meter, the price is right. I think I paid about 60 bucks for it, and you can find them for about 60 to 70 dollars, just depending on where you get them. Which is excellent for a meter this accurate. The main problem I have with it mechanically is there's no there are no brass inserts. Your screws, even for the battery compartment, you're probably going to open the battery compartment pretty frequently, or, you know, somewhat frequently, more than you're going to open the whole meter. Nothing. Just goes right into the plastic with a self-tapper. That isn't great. But, you know, be careful when you're putting them back in. And it shouldn't cause too many problems. Once those, the battery holder and these two screws are out, it just kind of pops right open. Hinges up, there's some clips up at the top here to watch out for. You don't want to break those. And it's got a really, really good deep, deep groove, deep lip around the outside. That's just to prevent, you know, if something does go explodey in here. Keeps it from getting to you. Another thing to not really like about this meter, well, it does have PTCs. I thought it didn't. Why did I think it didn't? Anyway, um, the input protection isn't stellar. Uh, these, these are the fuses it comes with. I have no idea how I haven't blown that up yet, but um, they're not, you know, like real proper uh, HRC meter fuses. They are uh, ceramic sand filled fuses, so that's good. The other problem, if you're in America, is that this BS1362, especially in this one amp size, is you're never going to find one. Uh, you can buy them online like from Amazon UK and pay really exorbitant shipping rates and maybe get it eventually. I'm noticing some of those capacitors up there off kilter. Anyway, um, what I've done for the 10 amp range, which is the one that I blow frequently, um, it's just replaced it with uh, more available size of fuse. These are sold as microwave fuses. They're just, they're fast blow. Um, ceramic case fuses uh, that are available here in America and it actually does we can see it over here it has the positions for you to move one of the fuse holders to fit what whatever fuses are available so that was really easy it was kind of it was basically designed for that to be able to move the fuse holder for whatever fuses you have easily available in your area 
This next part is going to be a little more difficult because the circuit board has to come out and that's not really designed for user serviceability. Okay, as far as I can see, there are three screws. There's one down here, two up here. Nothing looks too, too friction fit. There is this kind of, sorry, looking through the camera so I can see what you're seeing. Um, there's this kind of clippy thing in the middle here. That clip, clip-like thing in the center is holding it in. Oh, there's two more clips on the side. Okay. One in the center, I would imagine, doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah, one in the center doesn't do anything at all. Okay. I'm not really seeing anything too nasty on there. Unfortunately, I was really hoping for something obvious. Okay, here's the selection switch. The nice part, the cool part, is that it's labeled. Positions are labeled internally. Might have to examine the... Oops. These just fell out of the case. Just not seeing anything very apparent. This may just be something I have to live with. For my benefit in examining this and yours in viewing it, I'm going to switch to a macro lens and we'll get up real close without getting too into it. Uh, this, instead of what you would normally do with a macro lens of leaving the subject on the bench and using the zoom to focus, I cannot do that. I have to move the thing back and forth. So if this goes a little shaky and out of focus, that's why. Still not really seeing anything that would lead me to believe there was a contact problem here. Some of these, you know, they show a little wear as you would expect, but nothing terrible. What's that? No, uh, it looks fine. And the whatever gunk they put on these diodes is kind of gross. There's just a ton of calibration pots like this, and like these here. Those are, cal those are calibration caps, probably. Not pots, that's a pot. So that's cap. Looks like a pot. Um, but yeah, a ton of those. That's how they get it that accurate. Uh, so you could pretty easily make it very inaccurate. Or if you took it to a cow lab or something, you could get it to be even more accurate than it is out of the box. That's kind of neat. Yeah, big... Much larger style 10 turn for the DC volts there. Got a funky angle there. But, you know, it works. They don't look so much like they're leaking, they just look like they're, they were installed poorly. Not gonna bother with them. I'm gonna try. More for my peace of mind than on the assumption that it'll help anything. Just going over these contacts with an eraser. Just trying to clean them off. I'll do it with the 
wiper contacts on the... Actually, that does look much better. Kind of interesting non-electrical side note. This is one of the points where the the rubber, the outer rubber molding, the red molding, goes through the case just to attach it better. I don't see any others, um, but it's not like it's about to come off. It is very firmly affixed, so probably there are some others that just don't go all the way through the case. And here's a couple on the rear case as well. There's one there, and there it is, one down there. Didn't really notice any problems with the plastic detents either. They're kind of just as crappy as they've always been. So, not convinced this did anything, but it is time to put it back together. Mm -hmm. Hopefully that was okay. Shit. Yep. Yeah, that wouldn't have been great. Click, hopefully, hopefully that's a good click. Sounded good anyway. Buttons feel approximately correct, that, that feels exactly the same. No change to that, whether the board is in or not. Nice and loud with the back off. I'll be damned. I'll get this button back up, but it now seems like it works perfectly. That's it. Alright, I'll try messing with it now that it's all closed up again. These ranges had no no problems anyway. Huh. Alright, well, I didn't think that would do anything. But it has. So if you have problems with your, oh, I can still get some, some weirdness there if I really try. But it's just when it goes between the two ranges. I bet I could do it with other ranges that haven't had any problems before. Yep, sure can. So if you had problems with this uh, UT61E being kind of iffy, on any of the ranges, uh, apparently just take it apart and clean the switch contacts. That's all it takes. Filed under, uh, what the heck, why not? Uh, just to make sure I didn't mess up any of those 
pots I was talking about and test it against my the next line of defense Mastec 830B mm, still looks fine that did not mess up the DC voltage pot who knows about the rest of them looks good to me